Ah, hello, hello, hello. I am back out and I'm on the Isle of Skye. And today's objective is a hike up the Rough Mountain, which is Garven and its neighbour, Belig. Garven translates to the Rough Mountain, and I believe that's exactly what it is. But for the time being, I need to get across this pathless moorland and pick up the ridge and what I'll do is I'll bring you back once the views start to open up behind me That is 45 minutes on the clock and I've literally only done 2 kilometres but the good news is I've left the bog behind and I'm not too far away from the ridge the hills behind me there are the Red Coolin. You've got Ben Jerig Vor, and you can't see it, but behind that, you've also got Skur Vary, which is better known as Glameg. It's this big cone shaped mountain seen from the Slagakin pub. Did these yesterday, I never bothered filming them because I just enjoyed the company of my two friends. But today I'm solo, so I thought, get back on the camera. I'm going to take these gears off first, though. It's absolutely roasting. These are the views opening up behind me. You've got the Isle of Rassi right here. And the Red Coolin there. And you've got Marsco to my right. And my main objective, the Lumen Large, right there. I literally just came around the corner there and I've just been given a fantastic vista of the main Coolin Ridge. Whew, that is amazing, check this out. Right, admittedly I don't know all the names off by heart, but the ones I do know is obviously the inaccessible Pinnacle, Skur Jerag, then if you pan to the left slightly you've got Skur McConnick, and then the big high one left of Skur McConnick is Skur Alistair which, correct me if I'm wrong, is the highest mountain in sky. That's me reached the base of the ridge. I've got just under 400 metres of ascent to reach the summit. It's going to be steep and it's rocky. It's the Gabbro rock, so it's really rough, really grippy, but it will tear apart your fingertips and it destroys boots. So if you're going over to do the main cooling ridge, uh, I would suggest getting an old pair of boots rather than your new ones. I made the mistake of wearing brand new Mendels doing the in-pin in Skur McConnick and they got absolutely trashed in one day. Well that's me just done the second shoulder of the ridge. Two hours since leaving the car and I've just got the final pull up and I must admit it is looking a tad intimidating but as far as I'm aware there's nothing too difficult just stick to the crest Yeah, so the summit is just beyond all this so uh, I'll get up this and I'll bring you back Yay, that's me made it to the summit of Garven. And wow, what an airy little summit this is. The views are super boss. Right, so straight ahead of me, I've got Blavin, which is a Munro. Just to the left of Blavin is the famous Clack Glass Ridge. And uh, this little pinnacle is nicknamed the Matterhorn of Scotland. And I tell you what, it looks terrifying. There's absolutely no way you'd get me across that. My friend Ian, he's going to do a triple Graham Corbett Munro completion on these three hills. So you've got Garvin, Belleg, which I'm hopefully going to do next, and the big bad boy behind me there, Blavin. That is simply stunning. It's a complex beast, that. Right, I've had a quick bite to eat and a drink. Now I just need to figure out how I get off this one. Seems to be a path. 
just leading down there. I think there's one more bit of scrambling and then it's just a steep descent down there. That's me reached the Bialik. Three hours and ten minutes on the clock since leaving the car, so that's not too bad. But still only covered five and a half kilometres. I'm not surprised that Anne nicknames this one I'm doing next, Bell End, because I am at an altitude of 450 metres and then I need to pull all the way up there to 702 metres. If Garvin's enough for you, you can safely descend from this Bialik back down towards the car at the lay-by. But otherwise, let's push on and get this little bell egg in the bag. There you go. You can probably hear I'm breathing out my arse here. <laughs> but anyway, you can uh, pick up this dry stone dike which you can handrail just up to the summit, just there. There's a couple of hill runners about to overtake me. They're battering up this hill. Let's see if I can beat them. No chance. <laughs> Well, I've been on the, the summit of Bell Egg for about probably 20-25 minutes just soaking in the views. The two hill runners are long gone, they'll be back at the car by now. But yeah, I'm just uh, just enjoying the vista, it's absolutely stunning. Although, because there's no wind, the midges are coming out and it's the first time I've seen them this year. So uh, I'm actually crawling all over my camera right now, annoying. So uh, yeah, so I'm going to pack up in a minute and uh, get down this nice grassy ridge, which I'll show you in a moment. Oops. Right, I'm just heading down Bell Eggs North Ridge at the moment. It's a fairly grassy plod. Some rocks in places, but nothing too bad. However, just before you get to the end of the ridge, it steepens up and it's barred by crags. So instead you head off to the west and there's a scree slope that will take you back down. And I'll show you that in a moment. That's me at the bottom of the screes now. It was good fun actually. Got down in no time at all. I know scree isn't everybody's cup of tea, but uh, you can use it to your advantage if it's the small stones and pebbles. Because what you do, or well, this is my technique anyway, is I just bend my knees slightly, sort of dig in my heels and just do little mini steps. And then before you know it, the stones are just carrying you down gently. And uh, occasionally you'll stop. If you use trekking poles, just put them out for balance. Uh, don't lean too far back, don't go too far forward here and just uh, tentatively ride the stones down, it's perfect. Right, it is Boggy McBogface again. I should really put my gaiters back on but I can't be bothered. To be honest we're staying at the Skywalker Hostel in Port Nalong so they've got a drying room so I can get stuff chucked in there if needs be. It's a really quirky hostel, I quite like it. It's got a Star Wars memorabilia and just really quirky, off the cuff stuff, little jokes uh, pl plastered about the toilets. So when you're sitting having a dump, you can read the back of the door. <laughs> but the one really cool feature is he's got this glass dome at the back, and it's like the crystal maze. 
Remember that with Richard O'Brien? You used to have to collect more gold tokens than silver at the end and each crystal was at 5 seconds of time Anyways, I digress, it just reminds me of that <laughs> uh, But yes, if you're uh, heading to the sky it's definitely worth considering It's £30 a night which seems a little steep but to be honest it's kind of the going rate now coming out of the pandemic and just with that word I hate, staycations Anyways, I am going to wrap this video up because I can see the car from here in the lay-by now there's not much more to show you other than this bog so thank you for watching and I shall catch you in the next one Cheers!